Shout out to the boy Rob from Shonen Showdown because he called it. Demon Slayer has put the anime community on notice, and the anime community has answered the call. Hello? Is this you, Photobull? Yeah. Mama ain't raised no b Studio Mappa came swinging with Hell's Paradise. Madhouse descended from the heavens with Yamada. Production IG stopped playing games with Heavenly Delusion. Slice Life fans said, I ain't hearing no bells, as they were treated to Skip and Loafer. And Oshino Ko has taken over the fucking world. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's slow down for a bit. You guys know I bring on another any tuber to bother, I mean, uh, I mean, a uh, cameo in these videos and shed some of their opinions on the season. And this seasonal breakdown we have. Oh, fuck, it's me. Going viral with a smile to the media. Keeping all my secrets hidden, I'm mysterious. Even second guessing in my lane, I'm in my area. Keeping up the perfect lie, it's how I'm wowing ya. Now you see the idol in me. On the rise, RJ, you stand before the anime council. Speak. I think it's time we say it. New anime is getting better than old anime. What the fuck did he just say? All right, hear me out. We'll start off small and work our way up. Slice Life fans have been eating good because Skip and Loafer has exploded onto the scene. You said small, but this is one of the top five anime this season. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Small town meets big city as this wholesome slice life drama follows meets me as she has big dreams to work in the Japanese government and moves to Tokyo to make this happen. Unfortunately for her, she's not as uptight as she likes to believe, but maybe that's not such a bad thing because through her clumsy nature, she manages to attract the people around her. One of them being Shima, the hottest guy in her class, and <laughs> oh, the plot thickens. What makes Skip and Loafer so great is that it excels at character writing. The main point isn't to tell a cohesive story, although it does have one, but to explore these characters. No bases are left untouched, and no one is a one-note character. And it's writing like this that makes the slice of life genre and shows like Skip and Loafer, I have no idea why it's called that, so damn good. You get your wholesomeness, you get your drama, you get your romance, it allows the audience a chance to connect with everyone. Finally, a show where we can all truly go, they're just like me for real, for real. Wait a minute, Shima skips class and meets me wears loafers. Oh my God, it's all coming together. Ugh, fine. If you're a night owl like me, recent shows like Call of the Night gave you the representation you deserve. Well, time to add Insomniac After School to that list. It's ironic, because I would literally watch this show when I couldn't go to sleep. There are many ways for people to connect, and one of them is shared struggles. Nakami and Magadi are both having trouble getting to sleep at night, and it's starting to affect their daily lives. But get this, guys. The show decided to crank up the wholesome factor when the two discover that sleeping together, get your mind out of the gutter, it's not that type of show, is the only way they can get some good sleep. Shinji, crank that wholesomeness. Again, Slice Life anime has been killing it. The show is filled with nice vibes, a beautiful romantic connection, and you get to learn a little bit about photography. All right, let's take that thumbnail photo. Um, yeah, make sure I'm centered frame, check that f-stop and ISO to make sure the photo's not overexposed. Um, switch on that autofocus because you're new. It's better to not use autofocus, but whatever makes you comfortable as long as the picture is in focus. And um, what, what lens are we using? Uh... And as for the ending, <laughs> side note, insomnia is an actual problem. If you or anyone else you know has it, make sure you get the help you need. I don't have insomnia. My dumbass just won't go to bed. <laughs> What in the Studio Trigger is this? Take Studio Trigger's animation style, Akiba Made War's comedic writing style, and Shimoneta's concept, just switch porn out for otaku, sprinkled in with magical girls, cause fuck it, why not? And you have one of the most bombastic anime of the year. Did she just do that with her pinky toe? Her pinky toe! 
An organization called the SSC has for some reason made it illegal to be an otaku, and instead of putting down their body pillows and leading your average free anime life, the weebs in this show did what any other self-respecting otaku would. They started a civil war. The country is divided between otakus and normies as both sides clash, and uh, come on guys, we're on team otaku, because <laughs> who wants to be a lame normie? We follow Otaku Hiro, the leader of the rebellion and the three magical girls fighting on his side as we unlock the secrets behind both the otaku's oppression and the magical girls. This show makes no sense, and it's not supposed to. It's just a fun ride with great comedy and action, and let's be honest here, those magical girl transformations fucking slap. This show has no right to look this good, but thank the otaku heavens, it does. I, RJ, the anime fan, have called this press conference here today to tell you all that I read the manga first! Does that mean we get to see your titties? It was in January of 2021 when the Hell's Paradise manga wrapped up its story and I was bored at work, so I decided to give it a go. And what I experienced was one of the most visually stunning survival stories of modern anime. And I say anime because the anime was announced shortly after I started reading. You know the premise. Gabimaru and a group of convicted criminals are sent to a strange island to find the secret of immortality in order to be pardoned for their crimes. And the journey the story takes you on is, well, no pun intended, gut-wrenching. Because you don't know if certain characters are going to make it and you don't know what's going to happen. In the sea of battle shonen that our young boy gets powers and must join said organization to learn how to use said powers to fight monsters, Hell's Paradise stands out from the rest by breaking that formula while still giving you the battle shonen storytelling we've all come to love. And yes, the animation isn't the best at times. You can't deny that. But the story is intriguing enough to stand on its own, even with less than desirable results coming from Studio Mappa. <coughs> video there. Side note, don't blame the animators, I'm pretty sure this was a production problem. And while Hell's Paradise is mixing up the Battle Shonen formula, Romance Shoujo is making someone of a comeback with my love story with Yamada Kun at level 999. Uh, what is with these long titles? Oh no, it gets worse. For example, my life is just as wrong as I expected after traveling to another world where I'm surrounded by cute girls at a magical high school and I'm also the fabled hero of legend. But before I tell you that story, I have to tell you this story in which I was walking along with an unbelievably impossibly cute younger sister who doesn't like me at all, and she said to me it was my fault she wasn't popular no matter how she looked at it as we walked. I hate this. This is very hard to do in one take. Plus, but she started dragging me away, and my sister got mad and chased after us, and I asked where we were going, and she said she was taking us to the Grimheart Magical School, where she was the school president, and then I guessed because I was now in a magical world. So last I got a speech from, and she asked me to recite a speech, which I did, and the speech went. For 12 years, you have been asking, fuck, that took so many tries to get right. Yeah, that's the whole title. That's, that's the entire title of the book. After getting dumped, Akane has a faded encounter with Yamada, a pro gamer who doesn't understand that he's a hot piece of ass. I mean, look at these anime girls swoon. Dear lord, this man was born with natural riz. The two get closer as they discover that they not only play the same online game, but they're also in the same guild. There are two things I love about this show. One, dear god have I missed that romance anime shoujo feel. If you've watched classics like Kimi Nitsu Doke or Maid Sama, then you know what I'm talking about. The appeal of shoujo romance is that it is designed to make you swoon as hard as the Yamada simps in the show simply by being as emotionally driven as possible. Akane isn't just some heartbroken girl. She's a genuine person hoping to connect with the people around her. Yamada isn't your typical anime soft-spoken dude. He actually doesn't understand social cues and misunderstands everything around him in a believable way. This show is all emotion, sprinkled with some anime comedy gold, and I have truly missed this feeling. And two. The show captures online interactions and friendships extremely well. Ever since starting this channel, I have made several online friends. We're not friends. And while watching Akane interact with the guilds, I couldn't help relating to her. Because she's just like me for real for real! So if you're chronically online like me, then this may be the romance anime for you. Plus, the show is produced by Studio Madhouse. Enough said. Speaking of anime productions, the next series is rated P for peak.
I know you've heard about Oshinoko by now, even if you do live under a rock. And a lot of people are going to tell you to go in blind. Yeah, I'm not one of them. Oshinoko is not an isekai, although it does steal tropes as the doctor who is delivering a 16-year-old famous idol's baby is killed and reborn as said baby, with his twin sister also being his patient who died years ago and was the one that told him about the idol in the first place. Confused yet? Basically, two super idol fans are reborn as said idol's children. Now you may be like, RJ, you just spoiled the show. Trust me, I did it. This is the basic premise of the show, and upon reading the first five chapters before the anime was released and thinking, eh, it's interesting, I had no idea that the story would evolve into what it is today. There is a reason episode one is an hour and 30 minutes long, and there is a reason it adapts the first 10 chapters of the manga. To fully have a first impression of this show, you need to watch that episode in its entirety. Not only is the story not what you think, but it's heavily relatable to anyone who works in the entertainment industry, whether that is creating content online or, I'm gonna say it again, being a filmmaker like your boy. This show gets you. The series dives into the dark side of the entertainment industry while still presenting you with the characters that steal the show every time they're on screen. The concept of this show is great, but if you ask me, the characters are just as well written. Each personality standing out on its own as not a single piece of dialogue is wasted, giving you the insight you need to connect with the main cast. Kana is clearly best girl, fight me. Also, this show is basically super secret Nepo Baby, the anime. And from the outside looking in, the show sounds like it's juggling multiple genres and that's Cause it is. Aside from trying to beat Gintama's genre record on my anime list, Oshinoko is a show that has multiple central themes, and after the first episode, many fans have expressed concerns about certain themes taking the backseat and a lack of direction. <laughs> Typical Kana fan. Call it blind faith, but I think after all is said and done, once the anime wraps up its last episode, we will look back at Oshinoko as one of those generational anime titles, just like the rest of the top of my anime. Or I could be wrong in this video age poorly. Eyes best go. Okay, speed run time. Let's start with a galaxy next door. If you're craving more slice life, this adult romance anime about a manga artist and his supernatural assistant might just be the wholesome show for you. A little slow at times, but worth it in the end. The dangers in my heart. This one grew on me. A show about a boy who strangely confuses romantic interest with murderous intent, don't ask. I thought this show was creepy training 101 because why the fuck are you stalking her? But you have to look through a Moshoku Tensei lens as our MC learns how to properly have a crush and Yamada, the girl he has a crush on, is just a fun character to watch. And you start to see these two get closer and closer and with Yamada's obvious signs of affection, you begin to root for the both of them. And now we've reached best of the season. I was gonna give this to Oshinoko originally, but I think there was one show that edged it out by a slight margin. And of course, that is... Heavenly Delusion is an anime that just captures you, as not only is Production IG giving it their all, cause look at that fluid movement, baby but also the story keeps your eyes glued to the screen as you try to figure out what happened to this world what is this place called heaven that our two main characters are looking for why are there monsters everywhere and why do these kids look like they're out of the promised neverland version two not the second season we don't talk about that all great stuff but what makes this show stand out is that it uses these story elements to tell a story about gender roles and gender identity yeah you heard that right the point of this show isn't necessarily to discover this world, but for the characters to discover themselves, question their actions, and come to a conclusion about who they are. Think Darling in the Franks, if it was written well. What happens when all the social constructs that we as society has created come crumbling down because the world has gone to shit? Well, watch Heavenly Delusion and find out. This show is a character exploration with personality as you forget about the main plot at times and simply enjoy watching our main cast on screen interacting. Basically, this show is a dystopian apocalyptic exploration of gender identity and that's fucking cool. And it has rightfully earned its place as best of the season. And plus, He's just like me for real for real. You get it. And that's it. This season was really good. But what do you think, Toto? Can I call you Toto? No, please don't. Is new anime getting better 
an old anime? While you certainly have your issues like all of last winter, except for the Cunny Show, spring, like fall of last year, go to show that newer anime titles on average are a lot better than older anime titles despite the speed at which they're produced. Now this does lead to its own issues like Hell's Paradise actively melting on screen and Nier still being on hiatus, but on average it introduces a lot greater quality of shows like Skip and Loafer, Heavenly Delusion, and The Dangers in My Heart, even if most of the rest of the shows are just dog shit isekai. But the better question is, why didn't we talk about the idol lol? Anyway, I agree and well said. There are a lot of throwaway shows, that's true. But the 12 or more shows that we are getting that are worth watching are changing the game forever. And I think it's about time that we as a community start accepting that there are enough new bangers to rival the classics. Hey guys, join the family in that Discord. We would love to have you. Spring 2023 was a really good season of anime, so I really hope you enjoyed this video. And summer looks like it's gonna be a banger as well. So subscribe so you don't miss the next one of these. Guys, thanks so much to Toto. Yes, I'm gonna still call you Toto for being the cameo in this seasonal breakdown. You guys know the drill. Go over to his channel, check it out, subscribe. He makes some great stuff. Uh, he's also a seasonal content creator, so this this collab was bound to happen one day. Um, a special thanks to Crystal and Mori, our patrons. And if you want videos like this early, along with a bunch of other exclusive benefits, then head over to our Patreon. That's patreon.com slash on the rise anime. And also follow us on Twitch and Twitter. We would love to have you guys up there. Also, we're up there quite often. And if you watch this far in the video, a special thanks to you. As always, my friends, I'm RJ Lane, and this has been On The Rise.